shock us with retribution, but Cena is going to be the peacemaker, baby. And that's because John Cena will star in The Peacemaker, which is a spinoff series based on the character he is portraying in the new Suicide Squad movie. Cena wrote on Twitter, Working alongside James Gunn on Suicide Squad was an absolute masterclass in how to bring and how to best bring beloved characters to life in a new and fun way. I cannot wait for the DC Universe to experience more of the absurdity that is The Peacemaker in this new project for HBO Max. Ooh, HBO Max gets another one. I guess I don't even know if I knew Cena was in the next Suicide Squad movie. I don't even know who the Peacemaker is. I don't either. I'm not. I, when it comes to DC, outside of like very narrow Batman lines, I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know a lot of DC either, and I do know that the first movie was pretty rough. Is this going to be like a Zam where it's made for kids? Because that was not a very good movie. I oh the the cartoon you're talking about or the no the that was the newer movie, movie that they made. With... No 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 I mean but are you talking about Cena's movie or Cena's cartoon? The no or whatever, this or... movie like is this going to be like Kazam? That because I don't know blah blah blah. It's funny because the DC universe can't tell if it's pandering to its adult fan base or its child's fan base. Well, Suicide Squad was an R-rated movie, so I'm assuming it's at least it's going to be PG-13. I'm assuming The Peacemaker, though, is probably going to be, uh, I'm guessing that would be, I'm guessing for the kids? I guess I don't know. <laughs> we'll that's, the way I, that's the way I assumed, I guess, being as a Cena is starring in it and all. The um, thing that's weird, though, or maybe not weird, because I don't know anybody who has the, the DC app or whatever the fuck it is, but DC has its own app, but it isn't going to be on that. It's going to be on HBO Max, so. And it might well, be on DC's, both, DC's app is, is like dead now or about to be shut down in like three weeks. Ugh, it needs to be. Or maybe HBO is going <laughs> to buy it. Who knows? Probably, because they, they have the rights to the Warner Brothers catalog already. All the Batman stuff's on there. Well, Warner, yeah, Warner Brothers owns HBO. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. Maybe you learn something new. Maybe you're like, you guys are talking in circles, you fucking idiots. And you don't care. Either way, you should be entertained, right? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Cody Rhodes has again been denied a trademark for the nickname made famous by his father, Dusty Rhodes. This was his third attempt at trademarking the American dream. And the third time being the charm wasn't as it was rejected. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office shows Cody attempted to trademark the term on June 25th, 2019. According to documents obtained by Heal by Nature, Cody filed for a reconsideration of the rejected trademark application recently, and the filing was rejected by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office due to WWE's claim on it. He keeps trying. Yep. Yeah. Eventually he'll get it. One day they're going to slip up. <laughs> Probably he'll not while waiting. Vince considers them competition. <laughs> Probably not while Vince is alive. Yeah. <laughs> or at least not while Vince is running. It. <laughs> yeah, and he's not the only one having issues. Ryback recently discussed his own trademark battle with the E on the Ryback Show, number one podcast in America. Uh, it's such a joke, nobody even laughed. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "He said I'm dealing with it now with the Ryback trademark talking." Didn't about he Cody change his name team. though? Well, you know, let's let's talk about the story, Pasty. Maybe All right. we'll get some answers, just like the listeners. The big guy began on the show. We're going into the trademark attorney's office. They're going to be deciding this in the next twenty months. Because trademarks are pretty rough and expensive to get. It's not a fun issue. The big guy would elaborate further, saying how the situation will be held up by WWE to cost him as much as possible in legal fees. This is going to be tied up. It's going to cost me God knows how much in attorney's fees and a lot of time. I'm getting the Ryback trademark so they cannot use it and profit off it in any way or expose it or do anything to hurt my brand further that they've already done. It's crazy. The next member of Retribution to be named is going to be named Ryback. 
When I left there, they were threatening me to sign over not only all my social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at the time. They wanted me to not change my name legally from Ryan Reeves to Ryback and give them my social media, which is absurd, he says. So he's working at it. I can almost guarantee that uh, Cody will get American Dream before Ryback gets yeah, yeah. Ryback. <laughs> we'll see yeah. in the next 20 months. Yeah, he'll get it just in time for a retirement match. Right. Fucking. No, oh, after after Warrior changed his name, I'm sure WWE wasn't playing those dumbass games anymore. You know what I mean? They well, WWE still... Great. Yeah, WWE or WWE F. It was E when he, no, it was still F when he changed his name. They they still, I mean, owned the Ultimate Warrior trademark until the day he died, and they still owe it now. He just changed his name to Warrior so he could use Warrior because they didn't have a trademark on it. Why well, doesn't he just change the spelling so it's like R I B A C K, or just drop the K R Y B A C? <laughs> uh, because if he uses it in wrestling, WWE will still. I mean, yeah, it's still it's an infringement close. on their trademark, yeah. He, he could be a parody of himself, though. Parodies are, are legal. Pasty, he is a parody of himself. <laughs> well, then he should be in the clear. <laughs> I got your back, Rye. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Rye, back. And good luck to alcoholic wrestling fans everywhere, Pasty. Yes, because wrestling fans will soon. <laughs> this is so petty. I uh, hate it so much. Soon be able to enjoy WWE branded wine. <laughs> <laughs> Slap bags at the festival with us. As the cool. Sports Entertainment Federation has partnered with the Wines That Rock to produce the first ever WWE Wines Collection. And they don't involve The Rock, which is funny. Bearing the <laughs> likeness of The Undertaker and Ultimate Warrior. And, I mean, I, who, what wrestling fan is going to be able to drink that and not just think about Undertaker or Warrior's feet the whole time? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I just think it's, I don't know. I guess uh, Warrior and Undertaker. I mean, <laughs> to be fair... Wine that rocks doesn't make wine for people who enjoy wine. They make wine for fans for collectibles. Yeah. You know, they've got they've got Grateful Dead, they've got uh Kiss, they've got Rolling Stones, um, all sorts of uh Sting and the Police or the Can you police, imagine people buy this shit? Them. They put it on the shelf. They come back in like forty years. Ah, the Undertaker. From the year 2020. A fine year. <laughs> to be fair, and now that I think about it, I don't know where in the fuck it went. But I actually had two of the Grateful Dead ones. Nice. I had one with uh, the bears on it, and I don't remember what the other one was. But, um, you know, I honestly don't know whatever happened to them. But, I mean, they do sell... Like real wines, also, but I don't think anybody buys real wines from them. Yeah, um, they just want to get Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon wine. And... <laughs> Who the fuck is this? I'm actually looking at their website right now. There's a wine called My 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 Merlot, and it's signed by some old white guy. <laughs> I can't I even don't... see what the fuck it is. I don't. I don't know if that's supposed to be. Oh, it, it has a it, uh, investigation discovery stamp on it, which is like a C-list cable station. <laughs> That's funny. So they obviously, uh, I mean, well, here they go. Partners, Paramount, NBC Universal, Rolling Stones, Condé Nast, Pink Floyd, Grateful Dead. Well, there you go. NBC Universal is one yeah, of Yeah, that's how WWE that got it. They didn't even make there. this deal happen. NBC did. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the guy got fired last week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cucumber got kicked out because of the wine. Oh, fucking cucumber! I miss that little pickle. Um, to be fair, the the bottles. I don't know if anybody's seen them or not. The bottles look badass. I mean, they do. Yeah. You know, I I buy it and just and put it up and just keep it up. Never open it. Shelf. Yeah. And then yeah, forty years from now, you can tell everybody that how how fine a year twenty twenty was. Yep. It's fine vintage. 
2020, just, if you want me to sum up, I'd be telling my grandkids, you want me to sum up 2020? WWE wine. <laughs> <laughs> what better analogy for fucking 2020 than WWE wine? That's perfect. <laughs> some fucking shit, man. Oh, I guess we got to move on to some shit too, Pasty. We got this one's got a racist on it. We got. <laughs> The Where's the Chris Benoit a, one then, huh? Call it Blood of My Family. That that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be uh, pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Buy a bottle of that. <laughs> oh, speaking of the blood of families, Pasty, it moves us into the injury report. And uh, we don't have much on the injury report, more than we ever want, but, man, it moves into some a lot of COVID shit, so we're going to start out with non-COVID-related crap. Miro, the former uh, Rusev, I almost forgot his WWE name for a second. <laughs> it reportedly, doesn't matter. Right. Miro reportedly suffered a minor injury on Wednesday's Dynamite. In the match, Miro and Kip Sabian defeated Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela, which I want to watch that match. And that happened when Miro used his Game Over submission, which is uh, the former accolade, to make Sonny tap out. I don't know if I like that name or not, but I'll have to, it's I'll have to see. It's a streamer. It'll on yeah, it'll grow on me. There was some concern after Miro started selling a leg injury after getting sent to the floor as chaos broke out towards the end of the match. Brian Alvarez noted that Miro tweaked his ankle, but he felt better after the match and should be fine. Dude, he fucking, he dropped Kip Sabian on his head. And you can hear Joey Janela yelling, Are you okay? Are you okay? (laughs) This was not a great debut for Miro and AEW, and it's going to make him come off as AEW's right back, I think. Oh, no. Yeah, I I don't know. And, And then I got these worries, too, like, WWE, we got to see, you know, what he was like behind the scenes and his YouTube and shit like that. And everybody liked who he was, but he still needs to portray a character because him in wrestling, him as himself in wrestling doesn't, it's not working for me. I guess it's too soon to say, but right. yeah, no, I he watched this and this, this didn't, this didn't do good for me. I was like, oh no. That's oh, sad no. because, because Miro is so talented, you know. Yeah, yeah. We know he is, and we know he's got he's got the um, charisma. But maybe Cody maybe came back. Of the people that Cody also a, came. A character, you know what I mean? He could yeah. be. Not everybody can do it on their own. <laughs> I mean, like I said, we'll see. Give him some time. You know, he he just he started with WWE. You know, they built him to their machine specifications. Then he's let loose into the world and he goes to AEW where they're like, just do what you want. And that's probably a little bit too much freedom for him. Do whatever the hell you want. (laughs) We just don't even care. But uh, Cody came back this week on Dynamite. And because Miro has blonde hair, Cody went back to black hair. Really? Yep. Ah. I didn't like the blonde hair, but I thought maybe I would grow to it. Honestly, now that I see him in black hair, I prefer the blonde hair. Really? Yeah. I want him to do, um, I don't even know which wrestler this was. I was watching Botchamania, and uh, one of the wrestlers had half black and half blonde hair, and it was uh, an African-American fella, and it really looked cool. Like I, like, I, I wanted to hate it, but I was like, it really looks cool. Mm. I, I no, what I really it. want, and I know I'm going to have to wait a few more years for it, maybe... Uh, Cody Rhodes with gray hair, just straight up gray hair. Cody Rhodes will look awesome. Right. Um, it, he can't look any worse. You know what would make him look awesome? Get a fucking tattoo removal. You could just mirror it on the other side of his neck, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 2020 is really not the year to get the American flag tattooed on your body. At least in my opinion. <laughs> Although this, you know, maybe the last year that America, the last full calendar year that America exists, who knows? <laughs> I know we're not getting into all of that. I'm trying hard not the, to. We're going to avoid the politics this I'm week. I'm trying hard not to. 
It's not, you know, maybe if you guys signed up for the Patreon, we could have that kind of discussion over there for your. That'd be great. I'd love to do that. (coughs) Patreon.com slash cloud style.